sewing friends and welcome to another episode of Sequin Girly Creates. Today's episode is the final in the Busy Bee Sewing Challenge that I have taken part with Sew Carol, Let's Sparkle with Sam, Sewn by Sarah, Christine who is Gemini Stitches and Jen from one girl and her machine or one girl create i'll definitely put a thing in now and also tag them all below christine and i've also made a playlist so if you want to go back and have like a little sort of binge and watch everything there's a whole playlist from the intros through to the challenge one challenge two and we are on challenge three results so today is the very final one, as I say, where we share the results of the last challenge, which was to use a free pattern to make a bag. And uh, we left everyone to choose for themselves. And I'll just do at the end, um, after the reveal of the bag, I'm going to do a, just a review of the three months of the challenge as well. So let's start with the bag. So I had a look around, there's a lot of bags out there, there's a lot of quilted bags, which I really liked the idea of doing, but I had to be realistic with what I could achieve in the time. But that doesn't mean I won't carry on and do more. My background actually in sewing is more in the textile arts and then using my textile art to make bags. So bags is kind of my wheelhouse i will pop some pictures in so you can see some other bags at the end that i have made in the past i've made all sorts of really large ones to like small really decorative bags and so what i wanted to do as i mentioned at the end of um challenge two reveal results and revealing what this was is so something i would use not just so it for sewing sake and it's something I'm really trying to do a lot of. I also wanted to avoid buying anything if possible because I want to support you all in not feeling you have to keep buying more to do what you want to do. So I decided to try not to shop for anything if possible and to shop my own stash and my own items, which I achieved. And I also, as I said, wanted to make it something useful. So this is where my thoughts went. I have a lot of nice handbags that feel very me, so leopard print, brightly coloured, decorative handbags, but I don't have a big work bag for autumn, winter that feels like me. I do in the summer, I have some straw bags, I have a sort of a weaved yellow and white one, but my winter one looks like this. Now, if you've seen any of my other vlogs or you watch me on Instagram, like what, what I post, you will know this is as far away from me as possible. It's not vintage. It's not my colours. It Yes. So I'll tell you how I ended up with this work bag. Um, I once needed to go into London for an interview a few years ago. Oh, you can probably hear the steam drain again for an, an interview and I couldn't find a bag big enough to fit everything I needed in at home that wasn't a straw bag or a tote over the shoulder bag. And again, lots, I've got lots of tote bags. And so I had to wear a tote bag into London and I was like, worst case, I'll use it. But I actually happened to have an accessorised voucher. So I arrived early and near Charing Cross, there's an accessorised shop. So I popped in and I spent my voucher on that. I felt it looked more professional. Now, I'm not sure whether the interviewer gives a two hoots what bag you use, but it made me feel better. And so that was about three, four years ago. And that's just been my go-to sort of winter bag since then. So I knew, although there's nothing wrong with it and I will still keep using it, I wanted something that felt a bit more me that was a bigger bag. So that's where it started. I'm going to put pictures in now as I talk. So I was having a bit of a sort out and there are some skirts that I've, I've put on Vinted and things and thought about donating to charity, but they weren't selling on Vinted. So I was putting a bag together of charity shop items and I looked at the fabric of a couple of the skirts and thought I really love the fabric 
and I am a bit sad to part with them but I won't fit in them so it's pointless them just hanging around I could have tried to adjust the waist but they would have made them too short and I suddenly thought hang on why don't I use them for the bag fabric and they were sort of thicker fabric anyway and one of them was faux leather like the pattern that I shared in, in the which bag shall I make um, and so I was like okay this is going to work so I found a free pattern which although I mostly read what it said um, I did sort of freewheel it a little bit but you could easily follow it it was very clear there was even all the measurements of the pieces so I will tag that below for you um, so I cut out two side pieces in the sort of wool tartan plaid fabric two side pieces in the faux leather two pocket pieces in the tartan two linings to the tartan a leather bottom because i thought that would be good when it's put down on the ground two faux leather handles and i shopped my stash to find a lovely autumnal orange fabric which was originally from ikea probably about 10 or more years ago for the lining and i also cut out a pocket to put in the lining as well I then set about, and I'm again mostly followed the instructions um, of how to put it together. But what I did do was free with it, but because I put a base in, the pattern shows sides, but the 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 piece is like making like um like a parcel fold at the bottom, and I wanted to have the faux leather at the base. Uh, I do have a lot of um bag making hardware like little feet and metallic clippers but I didn't know if I'd want them on this I can always go back and do them because I haven't stitched the, the turning through hole yet um I was going to follow the instructions on how to do like the cord for the handle but the instructions did give advice on using a teflon footed machine foot or sticking tape on it to sew with I tried I tried with the stick and sticky tape on, it did not work. So I went back to the drawing board. I, so I did try and I will try again another time with a corded style handle, but it was not for me on this occasion. So I just turned the leather inside out because it got like a soft inside, stitched it inside out and used my turning tool. It was still tricky and fought to turn them back through into handles. And I stitched the sides together the base on did the same for the lining but remember to leave a turning hole wrong right sides together stitched around the top making sure your handles go downwards and then turned it through so I hope you're ready to see it now I'm showing it to you with items in because I sometimes think bags can look weird when they're empty so here it is, you can see it's got the base here, there's the base, got the side with the pocket and same on the other side, the faux leather handles and then this orange fabric and a pocket inside. I'm going to put a little video in now of me modelling it for you. So this started life as a vintage skirt that was looking a bit worse for wear, that didn't fit me anymore. This was an old Zara faux leather pencil skirt that didn't fit me anymore. And as I say, this is some very old Ikea sort of upholstery type sort of curtain fabric. I did use, and you will be surprised on this, I did use heavy interfacing on just the, the front and back panel because when I first stitched it together it was very very floppy just the outer bag and I didn't want it to be I wanted it to be soft but not overly floppy so it's fine and I used heavy interfacing because that's the perfect thing for a bag I am thinking as I say about putting a metallic clasp here and um, I could put some little um, metallic feet on hang on I'll get them and I'll show you bit silly isn't it just trying to describe things when I can actually show you them so I have some metal magnetic clasps like this that's all oh, that's not the, no, here we go sorry so you want an inny and an outy 
So you've got one that pokes out and one that pokes in and they clip together. And these bits, what you do is you cut little slashes, making sure you put interfacing behind um, in the fabric. You poke them through and then you fold them down. So it's a bit like, um, oh, what are they called? Paper fasteners. It's like a, a haberdashery version of that. And then I'm just looking if I've got any of the feet. I don't think I have. Oh, I've got a little silver set of that as well there. I used to have some feet. So overall, very happy with my outcome. It ticks the box of not buying anything. It ticks the box of keeping something in circulation that might not have been otherwise. It ticks the box of it being very me, but also what it ticks the box for me of is that I was sad that I couldn't wear those things because I did like them and now I can enjoy them in a different way. And that got me thinking. So another one of the skirts that I don't fit in anymore, I'm going to turn into a waistcoat because I love the fabric. And it is a bit of a dilemma because I think could someone give it more life as what it is? But some of them are quite old and things like the waistband elastic is going and things like that. So to me, I'm happy with my decision to do that. And while I was rummaging looking for those things, it reminded me that there's a jumper that um, has been grown out of with this applique on the front. It was originally from Zara, uh, Zara the Gap Kids. And I always loved, it's really like, it's proper like machine embroidered applique and always loved it and didn't get rid of it because I really wanted to think of a way to use that and I have thought I did I did think about making it into a cushion but actually um, what I think I might do is put this onto a bag because I can wear it regularly and enjoy it or the back panel on like a denim jacket Imagine that down the top, actually. So anyway, what it's done, ultimately, before I go off on weird tangents, <laughs> is inspire me to revisit things that I am holding on to because I like and actually get them back into circulation now uh, rather than just holding them and just getting a bit stuck with those decisions. So, reveal done. Now what I'm going to do for the second half of my episode is just do a little sort of overall sort of analysis of the challenge so if you want to stay around and listen you're very welcome if you are done on that see you later challenge one was the pattern challenge it's scary when someone else chooses you a pattern and sends it to you but i really was open to anything and i'm really glad i said that because receiving a trouser pattern really pushed me to do things that I wouldn't have done if someone hadn't sent it to me. And there was like a nice peer pressure of not wanting to let Christine down. Challenge two, the refashion. I know for some people refashion like me is like our thing because my mind is very sort of creative. And again, a bit like for other people following a pattern is a comfort zone. For me, the refashion, I knew that um, I would well, it's what I do anyway, but what it did do again was make me do something that I've been putting off because I wanted to do something that I would really wear and also something that was of a standard that I was really proud of to share with you all because although I didn't feel any pressure, it encouraged me to push myself. So things like doing a double collar, not done that before and then the third challenge it's a tricky one choosing a pattern for everyone so at one point we thought about giving everyone the same pattern but that's really tricky because of skill levels etc um, and i know they do that on the sewing b program but that's very different and uh, i again really glad that i did that because it's made me use things that i've been sort of keeping in a box and now they get to being used and enjoyed. I'd love to know if you've taken part yourself. Um, do let me know because I'd like to put some pictures in um, 
at the end of an uh, like a review episode i might do a little like sort of just a video of everything so do send me a dm with a picture on um instagram if you'd like to share a refashion that we inspired you to do or a bag or um i know somebody did a pat got their daughter i think to choose them a pattern to do so please do um send me your pictures because I'm, i'd love to put them together um do think about whether you'd like to join in next year because i know that i'd like to do it next year and christine and i would like to kind of keep it going and maybe we can take it out into our real socials as well and also um do let me know what your favorites were out of everybody's out of the five people and the three challenges there's 15 items to choose from I'd really love to know your favourites because, again, I can share those. I might do a little poll of mine, which of the three things I did. Um, and as you know, that it's inspired me to do other things. I've nearly finished the um, dress, um, which is the white polka dot and zebra, which I'll share with you as soon as it's done as well. So do let me know which of mine are your favourites. And also, if you can think of any other challenges that maybe we should add in in the future, because Christine and I, I'm sure, will start talking about it well before the time when it comes again. And uh, yeah, so if you don't use Instagram and you do want to send me a picture, the other way you can do that is to email me at southernsocial at gmail.com. It's right at the end of the vlog. I put the email address up so you could email me the picture if not as well. I'd really love to have some of your pictures in the review uh, video too. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the Busy Bee Sewing Challenge. I know I really have. It has really pushed me and encouraged me in areas of my sewing that I might not have done otherwise. If you want to know what I'm wearing, watch out for my next Sunday sews because it will be in there. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.